It's 1984. Uh, you're hired as a union organizer, so you're actually being paid to organize. Is that the first time you're really being paid? Were you ever paid to organize before that? No, no. It was, a, it was the first time. Yeah, a um, couple of things I, I uh, helped organize for uh, 80, 81. <clears throat> I helped organize for a demonstration in Washington that was uh, against nuclear power and nuclear weapons and they needed somebody to cover a couple of states around here and I got uh, paid back for my gas. That was uh, unusual. Uh, but uh, the working for AFSCME was the first time I got paid to organize. Yeah. And what was that like? I mean, you're, the union organizer role, uh, how did it relate? What was the experience like? Was it like a whole new world? Did you feel like you were able to pick up on, to apply things that you learned in your other types of organizing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of commonalities. Um, for one thing, I was, uh, I was very proud to say I was a union organizer. I mean, to me, that was uh, um, a very prestigious thing to, to do. And because of my interest in labor and labor history, it was kind of kind of neat to say that uh, people ask what you do. So I'm, I'm a union organizer. Um, and it was as far as the, the work itself, um, <laughs> I learned when I worked for Fuller Brush that uh, the job is not to sell something at every door. The job is to knock on enough doors until you find it people who are going to respond. Now, organizing basically is sales. And what I learned about sales and about organizing is the first thing you got to sell is yourself. So if you're organizing, people need to be able to relate to you, to trust you, to know that you're doing this for the right reasons. And that was easy to do. I mean, I believed in the union and uh, I enjoyed the work that I was doing. Uh, so I knew that I wasn't going to organize every school district that I stopped in, but I knew that there were people out there scattered around that I didn't know who, if approached, uh, might be interested. It, it was, to me, it was, it was uh, just a joy. I mean, I, I knew that uh, I was not going to uh, find union supporters at every place I went, and I knew that uh, if I went to enough places, um, I'd eventually find enough people to work with, and that's that's how it turned out. And uh, I had uh, over the five years that I did that, from '84 to '89, I had 16 elections and won 10 of them, and uh, one of them I had to in defiance. Uh, the school uh, system in defiance, non-teaching employees, bus drivers, uh, clerks, custodians, and so forth. Um, we had to have three elections before we won. We lost the first two elections. But uh, people that were at the core of it said, well, we want to try again. So it took three years <clears throat> and three elections, but we got a union in there. Uh, the, the most... Um, radical bunch, I mean the most determined bunch that I worked with were all women librarians um, at the Lima um, library system and they were they were great. They uh, and, and it wasn't about money with them. They felt that they were not treated well by their bosses, and universally so. I mean, all of the women in that bargaining unit had the same opinion. And they were tired of being treated that way. And they found uh, that getting a union was an opportunity for them to have some dignity at work and probably better pay. So uh, they, they just latched onto it, and they were fearless. And that's always one of the things that well, any kind of organizing, but particularly union organizing, because uh, workers feel like the, their jobs are being held in the balance and they have to be careful. And it's just uh, wonderful when you run into the workers who understand that they've got to do something about this and, you know, they're, they're all in and, and they um, are not intimidated. 
So uh, that was the, the every, everybody that I worked with, all the workers in that library system were the same. They all were, they all had had it. So uh, that was a really, that, that was always my favorite group that I worked with. But uh, 10, 10 different places we, we actually got a union in. Some of them, after I'd worked with them long enough, um, I tried to see if they were interested in labor history and talking about some of the more radical aspects of unionism. And some of them did. And um, I had a, a couple of large uh, coffee table books uh, um, that were written by uh, labor uh, professors here in Toledo. Um, it's called No Strength Without Union. And I bought a few of them at a remainder sale and uh, gave them out to people uh, a couple of different places where they seemed interested in the idea. But there weren't very many radicals uh, in, in the, the groups that I worked with. But um, where, where we won an election, they were all good, solid um, union people that knew that they had to stick together to better their conditions. So that's the you know, bottom line. Right. And, and it looks like you employed a principle that I think a lot of organizers take a while to arrive at, which is your time is better spent finding the people who are already interested and working with them to develop their interest mm -hmm. than trying to persuade or, or combat or, or have a big dialogue with people who are not interested. Exactly. Exactly. And that I think that is something that um, uh, relates in any field that you're trying to organize. I mean, I've seen um, professional organizers who can show you on a, a graph or something, uh, but really uh, it's easy to envision. Um, you have the, the issue that you want to organize around, and you've got people that are 100% committed to it, uh, a little bit committed to it, you know, barely, and the people that are against it. Well, it, which ones are you going to go after first, the ones that are the most interested? And the thing is, is to try and get people in each block to maybe move into the next block, you know, not to try to pull them into the center of activity, but just to maybe get them a little more interested and then next time around they'll be a little more interested. Right. So. Well, and at that point, it's 1984, you've been organizing in some capacity for 10 years in Toledo. So that's a full decade. At that point, are you really thinking about organizing in a serious way? Or do you see yourself more as just an activist who organizes on occasion when, when they need to? I mean, where did, uh, did you ever really fully adopt an identity or, or get into the, the science and the art of organizing? Not really. You know, um, I, I've always kind of done it intuition, seat of the pants, um, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I know there are uh, community organizers and community organizations and there's a, a theory and uh, practice that goes into that uh, with many similarities of what I was doing, but um, I just, I don't know, I just sort of uh, independently did this uh, because that's where my interests were and then stumbled onto uh, a position with asked me for five years where I got paid. So, um, you know, that's kind of how it worked out. And then after I was done working for asked me, uh, I would do organize, you know, organize around a particular issue or something like that. Ask me uh, goes to 1989. I assume you left after you were elected to city council. Yeah. Is that the yeah. major reason? Well, actually I left cause I got laid off. Um, I mean, and I got elected, uh, right about the same time, actually. I think I got laid off in September or October, and the election was in November. So, um, uh, yeah, we knew it, we got hired as organizers in a different classification, a lower paid classification than the regular AFSCME staff because it was an organizing project that was, you know, it's only going to last so long. If you're, if you're a staff rep and you have uh, contracts to administer uh, with unions that are locals that are established. I mean, that's an ongoing job. But if you're organizing, I um, mean, there's just so many places out there that are going to decide to form a union that never had one before. So uh, we, you know, we knew going in it was going to be a limited 
time. It turned out to be five years, which was longer than I thought, actually. So that ended in 89. I ran for council in 87 and, and didn't win, and then uh, got laid off from AFSCME in the fall of 89 and got elected in November of that year.